Hey everyone, it's Michael here. Uh, today I got a pretty cool little video. It's actually uh, how I control my throttle and blade lube with a simple flip of a switch. It's all electric controlled and it's been simple. It's actually been working for about two years. Speaking of two years, I made this video two years back and totally forgot to post it. So uh, stick around, check out the video guys. I hope you enjoy it. Well today's project's pretty awesome. I've been wanting to do this for probably about a half a year now. I wanted to have a toggle switch so I could just flip it and at the same time it would throttle up my motor and turn on my blade lube. So I'll show you all the components I got together to make this happen and I'll show you it running. Well, here's the parts and pieces I compiled for this. Uh, this was my original idea for the throttle control. It's a power door lock actuator. I got two of them for 14 bucks. They come in and out. They're quite powerful, but the problem I realized after getting them is they're momentary. If you kept power continuously to it, it would burn out the motor. So I had to come up with some other solution. And this I ordered on eBay. I got it from Hong Kong. It's about 20 bucks. And it's a diesel fuel pump cutoff valve and it just pulls this cable in and out. It's quite torquey and it's for continuous use and uh, so we're going to try that out. And it's got a 12 volt water valve. I think you can run air or water through it. I'm going to use that for turning on and off the blade lube. Some little brass fittings to link the line up to it and some springs, some hardware to mount everything and a switch. So stick around and we'll start putting this on the mill. So I just got the throttle solenoid mounted to the back wall of the blade guard here. It's going to be mounted to this. And I'll go around and show you what it looks like on the other side. So I'm not really thrilled where this is located, but it keeps away from the heat of the muffler and the motor. But it is inside the blade guard, so we'll see how long it lasts. Um, probably put some silicone around this little wire inlet, but it should be dust free for the most part as long as I seal that. I'll show you how I drilled some holes to mount this to fit that. So here's how I have it mounted out here simply just coming through this housing right here cable comes out and this is just the original throttle and I want to keep it in case something burns out ever I always like to make my mill so I can still run in manual mode so I just have to disconnect the cable pull a spring off and tighten this jam nut again and I could still run it and throttle it up manually in case I want to keep milling and one of these components burned out. All right now I got this all wired up here and ran all the wire through a nice little shielding wired loom. So I'll go over really quick how I have this set up. I got the water solenoid set down here. I got it wired up into the switch. This is the main switch, won't do anything. So if you bump it, it won't just throttle the motor up automatically until you bring this toggle up here. Once you bring that up, it arms the system. Once I turn this toggle switch here, it will turn this component. So I'll turn on the toggle switch and this will throttle it up. Now it turns on the blade loop blade loops coming out down there and as soon as I turn this off throttle it back so that's pretty much how I have it and I will do a little list right after this on where I got these components kind of and how much they kind of cost me point in the right direction that throttle control was kind of a pain to find anything close to it and the price I got it for it took a while I had to order it. it took about a month the first one I ordered from China never showed up this one I ordered from Hong Kong so I'll put some links in where I got this stuff and maybe you guys can find something simpler but it was kind of actually hard to find something as simple as this um, and anything I found was in like 100 to 200 dollar range this was about 20 bucks so I'll put some links right after this and you can check it out and maybe you can find something even better
All right, here's a few final words to wrap up the video. Um, this is some advice and some things I've learned along the way. I built this mill, as you guys probably know, from scratch about two and a half years ago, and it's been a great mill. I've really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a lot of fun to be able to take logs and mill it into um, beams and siding on your own property. Um, what I would say, though, is if you were going to build a mill, this stuff that we just covered in the video today, automatic throttle up and blade lube, and the other videos I've done for power feed, they're all great things. They all add a lot to the mill. But I would say if you're going to build a mill, I'd start off pretty much as basic as possible, like how I started with this one, just manually push it through the log, all those things. Because all these extra accessories can come later. They're all things that complicate the build. Make the build as simple as possible, because you already got a challenge enough by building the mill. Don't add all these until later. Add them when you realize that you need them on the mill. Um, when you get tired of pushing the mill down the track time and time again, you're tired out. Add a power feed, do things like that, but don't start off and add it all in the very beginning. It's just going to complicate it too much. And another thing, if you're really interested in milling but and building a mill, but you don't really have the skills to do it, if you don't want to take something like that on, what I've learned now, and I've had so much fun with this thing, is I had the ability to take on the challenges and build it. But if you don't know how to weld and don't know how to fabricate, but you're interested in a mill, just put some money aside and uh, save up for a year or two and get one, like a three, four thousand dollar mill just because they are so useful to have and quite fun to run, I think you'll be happy in the long run. You don't have to make it from scratch just to enjoy lumber and to be able to run one on your property. So uh, take those that advice, like build it if you can build it, seek out stuff, I built this for very cheap, or just kind of set a goal and put a little money aside per paycheck until you can't afford a mill. So um, I'll have a few little videos I'll link on the side here in just a moment for my power feed and if you want to check out some of those other videos but uh hope you enjoyed the video today and hit like and subscribe thanks for joining see ya